The typical U.S. household today is able to enjoy a comfortable economic life. The median household income, meaning we combine the incomes of everyone living in the same household, is upwards of $70,000 per year. It's enough for a nice home, plenty of good food, clean water, great entertainment, some travel, and more. I mean, at what point do we say enough is enough? Perhaps we don't grow forever, but we don't have to collapse either. Maybe we reach a new era where economic growth stops, but we still maintain our nice high standard of living. There are good reasons to think this might happen. Consider this little thought experiment. Some of you viewers out there might have a job, some of you may not, but consider a scenario where either way, I offer you a new job where you get to set your own hours and I will pay you $25 per hour of work that you do. If you took this job, would you work more hours than you currently do or less? There isn't a right answer, it just depends on your preference. Some people want more money to buy more things with, but others are content with what they have and would rather enjoy more time not working than putting in those extra hours. In theory, everyone should hit that limit at some point. At $25 per hour, you, it would take you 2,000 hours to make $50,000, which is close to the median income in the US. But what if I raised your wage to $100 per hour? Would you still want to work the full 2,000 hours per year, which is about 40 hours per week? Maybe not. Maybe you're happy with making $50,000 per year, but you would rather cut your hours down to 10 a week or only work full time three months out of the year. Imagine if I paid you $10,000 per hour. Do you really need to work full time still? A 40 hour work week would earn you $20 million per year. What are you gonna do with all that money? Maybe it would be better to take half the year off and spend your $10 million traveling the world. When we forecasted incomes for a few hundred years from now, we predicted that if economic growth continues, soon the typical person would be earning billions of dollars per year. That would mean they're making upwards of a million dollars per hour of work. If I was earning $1 million per hour these days, I would probably put in a solid week at work and then head home for a 51 week vacation rather than keep on working for money I couldn't even possibly find a way to spend if I wanted to. While earning a million dollars per hour is a bit extreme for our century, over the past couple centuries, people have chosen to use their higher wages to buy more free time and work less. Looking at those who have jobs, the typical work week in 1830 was close to 70 hours. People tended to work 10 hour days, seven days a week. And that was likely the case for the farmers and laborers before the industrial revolution. But with the onset of rising wages, the hours worked per week has been falling ever since. These days, the typical worker only works about 34 hours per week, and that's projected to keep falling. One common prediction for the post-pandemic world is that more workers will be able to work from home, and many will be able to work fewer hours per day as a result. And more and more businesses are starting to give employees three-day weekends rather than two-day ones. But if you recall, adding up income is one way to measure gross domestic product. If people choose to reduce their hours rather than working more and producing more and earning more money, then our economy won't be growing as fast without bigger and bigger increases to labor productivity. So as people choose more leisure time over labor time, we should expect economic growth to slow down. Importantly, if we stop growing the economy, then we run the risk of returning to the Malthusian trap where population growth slices our economic pie smaller and smaller until we each get a subsistence level piece. But as incomes increase, population growth has gone down. Most forecasts suggest that the human population will continue to grow until it hits about 11 billion people in 2100 and then start to level off. If that happens, 
then we won't have to worry about the Malthusian trap, and stagnation really will be possible. This idea is not a new one. It has its roots in the Great Depression, when an economist coined the term secular stagnation. In this case, the word secular comes from the Latin word meaning long term. Secular stagnation is a condition where there is negligible or no economic growth in a market-based economy. The idea really is that we have pretty much picked all the low-hanging fruit of innovation and that there are few innovations left to make which will substantially increase worker productivity and real incomes. Looking at the past six decades, we can see that the average growth rate in real GDP per capita has been slowing down. The 1960s saw higher growth rates than the 70s or 80s, which saw higher growth rates than the 90s. And economic growth since the year 2000 has been slowing even more. The thing is, this is what people predicted after the first industrial revolution. But then there was a second industrial revolution which reinvigorated growth, and a third and a fourth. Economic growth isn't as smooth as we might hope, and it takes some periodic breakthroughs to reignite. But so far, it has kept going. Stagnation may be in our future, but I would bet against seeing it anytime soon.